Hi guys, I'm Dawn from Creative Applicase. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new, please consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button down below and then click that bell next to it to be notified when I upload new content. On my channel, we talk all things machine embroidery, tips, tricks, ideas, ways to make it more fun, less expensive, and all things about machine embroidery. In today's video, I have a super fun new font that I wanted to share with you. And I wanted to let you know how to do this. So, it is a new font that uses yarn. I have it available in print as well as script. So if you want to learn how to do this, the ins and outs and what to use and how to do it, stay tuned. Let's begin with talking about the different types of yarns that you could use in these projects. And I will show you samples as we go. So the first one I started playing with was this sparkle chenille yarn. And one thing to be aware of when dealing with yarn, if you're not familiar with it, is there are numbers here referring to how bulky they are, the size knitting needles you would want to use, and also the size crochet hook you would want to use. So for me, I started with this super chunky, used, uses a 25 millimeter crochet hook. And I used it on these three inch letters. And I think that turned out really nicely. I like the thickness of it. I like how it looks and adds that dimension and loft with it. But there's something to be aware of that even though this is a 20, uses a 25 millimeter crochet hook, this one here also uses a 25 millimeter crochet hook. And I don't know if you can see the difference, but the pink one is not as thick to me as the white one and it may not look like it in the width here but it's definitely the white is definitely more round has more circumference to it whereas the pink is flattened out a little bit and so what that means is when you put this on the item you're stitching it on the white is going to appear to be bulkier and thicker than the pink even though these both use a 25 millimeter crochet hook so let me show you a comparison of the two this is the same exact design stitched out with the two different yarns. So let me get some space here for you to see how the same exact crochet hook size and how that looks different. So with the pink here, it kind of smashed it down and flattened it out. And with the white, there may be a little bit more space in it because it's loftier and rounder. So that's one thing to be aware of, to take into consideration. Uh, you're probably going to want to do a test stitch to figure out what yarn is going to work with what letters for you because this is going to be a personal preference on how you want it to look. So these are three inch letters using the 25 millimeter hook crochet hook. Uh, this was also the three inch font with the 25 millimeter crochet hook used. And so I also did some other samples here where I was trying to test out the sizes of the letters with the thickness of the yarn. So this is all the same yarn that I started talking about and these are the three inch letters, so you can see the clarity there. This is a 2.5 inch letter. It starts getting a little bit crowded, a little bit 
unreadable. And then this is the two inch letter and it's essentially kind of closed up in the center here. So the smaller I would I get with the letters, the thinner I will get with the yarn. So this was just a test to see how the thicknesses of the yarn work with the different sizes of the letters. So now let's take a look at using a, another yarn. So these are still, the white are still the three inch letters. The red is now the two inch letters. And as you can see the comparison here, the one on the lower right here is a two inch letter. These are the same exact letter here, the same size of the letter. And so what I used for the red, as I got smaller, I used an 11.5 millimeter. So this one here, is thinner and it shows up better with the size of the letters. Now, if you're going larger than three inches, four inches, five inches, six inches, seven inches, the 25 millimeter, I'm sure is going to be absolutely fine in all of those. But I started small so I can see the comparison of the different weights of yarn. Um, another yarn that I don't have here, but that might be good as well, is maybe a 15 millimeter. 15 millimeter might work well in the two and a half inch letters, whereas I feel like the 11.5 millimeter works well for the two inch letters. Now let's show you one last comparison here on thicknesses of yarn. Again, this is a three inch letter with a 25 millimeter. This is a two and a half inch letter with the 11.5 inch millimeter. And this is the two inch letter with a eight millimeter. So you can see how thin this yarn ended up being and how it essentially just got matted down by the stitching and it even frayed all the way away. So this is another one that worked somewhat better, but I still, you can still see all of the stitching on there, which if you prefer that look, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a preference on the look you want to have. But to be aware, the thinner you get with the yarn, the more Pos more likely it will be that you will get not get the yarn caught in the stitching. And so that could pre prevent, present a possible risk there that the thread, the yarn is not going to get caught, stitched right in the middle of it, and therefore could pull away. So this uh, eight millimeter yarn, really thin, hard to grab, hard to lay exactly over the running stitch, and therefore makes it more challenging, at least for me. You may be able to do better. So for me, I would say the thinnest I would go would be a nine millimeter. So how are these letters going to stitch out that are going to make sense with not getting your finger stuck under the needle. The first thing that's going to stitch is going to be a running stitch. It's going to be the simple outline of the letter. It, not, sorry, not the outline. It's going to be the simple shape of the letter in a running stitch. It is going to stitch, sometimes it's going to stitch in a backwards direction. That is because in order for the yarn to be sequenced in the proper order to stitch it all out, to hopefully connect letter to letter, especially with the script letters, you're going to want the running stitch, the bean stitch that stitches down the yarn to be in the correct sequence. So when we get to the machine, we'll show, we'll see how we do the running stitch and then how the letters are all broken up into sequences so that they are exactly done in the order that needs to be to stitch down the yarn. Okay, so now that we've talked about the types of yarn to use, let's go over the supplies that we're going to need to help assist us in making this project work. 
So obviously you're going to need your yarn. Very important to have a stiletto, a chopstick, a pencil, something that you can use to hold down the yarn away from your fingers and so the needle doesn't get stuck in your fingers. There are things that you're gonna to wanna to use to kind of temporarily hold the yarn down while you're stitching it. So you could use temporary spray adhesive. I would strongly recommend you use one that is specifically made for machine embroidery. So the, this Dritz brand is great. 505 is great. I would not use a normal craft glue. This is something that you don't want to damage your embroidery machine. I don't like the spray because you spray the whole area or you try to spray just in the spots, but the smaller the letters get, the harder it is to spray just in those areas. So what I prefer is good old Elmer's glue stick. The uh, washable ones, you wanna make sure you get the washable ones. Um, I washed every single one of these pieces to see how that they would wash and make sure that they didn't fray, come apart, the yarn come out from the stitching, all of that. I washed them, normal washing in the washing machine, and I dried them on low heat, and this is how it turned out, perfectly fine. So with the glue stick, I could see that some of the glue had dried onto the shirt, because I left it for a day or two. And after it was dry, I could see it was shiny. Like this stuff says it dries clear. Well, where the glue was was shiny, but after it went through the washing machine, it all completely came out. There's no glue that you can see on here anymore. So I prefer the glue stick just because I have better control over it. I can put it exactly where I want it and it washes out very nicely. You can also use tape. This is medical paper tape. You can use masking tape. You can use painter's tape. You can use regular transparent tape. All of those work. The problem is that I don't like with them is the way some of these letters are sequenced to run, uh, stitch here and stop, stitch here and stop. If more importantly, when it gets to the script letters and you're doing curves around and you don't want to cut the yarn, you may be taping over parts you've already stitched or taping over somewhere you're going to stitch. And so, and then when you pull off the yarn, the tape and maybe pulling parts of the yarn away. So I would caution you definitely do a test stitch with your yarn and the tape you're using, you know, just one letter, real simple and fast. And this whole thing stitched out in less than 10 minutes. The longest part it took for me was laying out all of the yarn. So I would encourage you to do a test stitch. You take the tape you're using or the glue and the yarn and try it out to make sure it's going to work for you. You can use some fray check if you want on the ends of the yarn. As I mentioned, I washed all of these samples and they've gone through the washer and the dryer. I did not use fray check and I had no issues with it, but this is something you can use to prevent unraveling if you're worried that that might be an issue. And then the next thing you're gonna need is a little vacuum to vacuum up the pieces when you cut between the sh shapes of the letters, the areas of the letters, like the E, this part stitched first, so I needed to cut that part, but then all of this stitched, not in one step, it was all divided into three steps here, but it stitched here, stop, stitched here, stop, stitched here, stop, but you, I wanted to make sure that I could vacuum all of that up before going on to the next parts of the design. You're also going to want to have a good pair of scissors to trim the yarn between the steps. And then I used a 9014 needle. I normally use a 7511 needle whenever I'm stitching, but with the yarn in the center, the part that holds all of these little chenille 
pieces together can be really tough. And if you feel inside of there, it it's it's kind of it's it's got a lot of strength to it. So I've already broken a needle um, doing a 7511. So I would encourage you to use a 9014 needle. I think that's all the supplies that we need right now. So you're going to want to take your design, combine it in your software, and then put it on your machine. And I will meet you at the machine and we will talk about step by step how to do this. One thing I wanted to mention is I've seen people in Facebook groups doing this who have multi-needle machines. And when you have a multi-needle machine, the presser foot tends to stay up higher than it does on a single needle machine. So I wanted to make this video for you all, all you single needle users out there, all you single ladies, so that we can learn how to do this on the single needle embroidery machine. With a multi-needle machine, you probably don't have to worry about the height of your presser foot, but with a single needle, you do. And so that is a very important point that we'll talk about when we get to the machine. Okay, so here we are at the machine. We loaded the design to the machine, hooped our stabilizer, our fabric, our shirt, whatever we're stitching on. And there are two very important points we need to take care of first before we start this. So now this is going to be different on every machine that there is, but there are the two settings that we need to change. So we're going to go into the machine setting and I am going to change the embroidery foot height. Right now the default is set at 0 0.06 inches. I want to raise the presser foot height as high as I possibly can. So I'm going to change it to 0.3 and I'm going to click on that and that's going to raise the embroidery foot height so we have clearance under there to not get stuck on the yarn. The next, the second point we're going to do is we're going to uh, adjust the embroidery speed, the speed that the machine is stitching at. So right now it's set at 10, 1050 stitches per minute. I'm going to slow it all the way down. So I'm going to slow it down to 350 stitches per minute. That is because I want to make sure that it goes slowly and in case it does get caught, I haven't had it get caught yet, but in case it does get caught on the yarn, that I can slow it down or stop it immediately and not get in too much of trouble. Okay, so now we click OK, and we're going to go back to the design. Okay, so I started stitching this out already, but I'm going to go back and start the design over because I want to show you something. Each letter is going to stitch in a specific sequence. And when you receive this file, you will receive a PDF that shows you the order in which the font stitches. So the first step will be a simple basic running stitch. That simple basic running stitch is going to stitch maybe in one, two, or three steps, but it's just going to be a running stitch. That is going to show you where you need to place the the yarn down. So it may not make sense in the order it is the the direction it is stitching. So with like this H here, you see it is starting at the end of the letter and it is stitching backwards. So with cursive, and if you were writing this, it would not be stitching, you, you would not be writing it in this direction. The reason why it is sequenced like this, which is essentially backwards, is because when you place, the next step that you're going to do is be placing down the yarn. And when you place down the yarn, you want the letter to stitch in the correct order. So now we're going to fast forward as this stitches all the way through all the letters in the word hello. This part for the running stitch is going to stitch really quickly because, as I said, it's just a running stitch. Once you place the yarn down, it is going to stitch in multiple sections for each letter. And you can refer to the printout that comes with the design. 
but each letter is going to stitch out a triple bean stitch in multiple sections. So it's going to give you the opportunity to stop and start between sections of the letters. So normally at this point of the H, I would not have cut it, but I wanted to be able to show you easier on the video what I'm doing here. So before I get all the way completed with one letter, I like to go to the next letter and get the glue on there. So obviously this goes a lot faster when you're not stopping and talking, but if you wanted to, you could probably go ahead and do all the glue all at once, all right after you've done, finished the placement stitch. And then that way it's all right there for you. So as I mentioned, I normally wouldn't stop here and cut, but I did so that it can be all in one, have the glue done before you get up to the next letter. Because once you get to the next letter, it gets kind of tight in there. And if you can see, especially with the script, I'm bumped right up there against the next one. And so it makes it a little challenging to get in there. So now on to the E. So with the machine slowed down this um, slow, it makes it easier to be able to go in there and shift the yarn as it's stitching in case it rolled out of the way, as we mentioned earlier. So these are the three inch letters. And it might have been better to use a little bit smaller of a yarn. This is the one that uses a 25. So now with this one, I'm pulling the yarn out in front of me around the arm of the machine so that it is not wrapping around and possibly getting caught in the presser foot. One thing to be aware of in some of these yarns, there's a really dense area in the center of it. So you wanna make sure that you're using a good 90 needle just so that it has the ability to get through that really tough part in the center. And again, you can tape this down if you prefer to do that. And just take it slow. You just want to make sure that you're keeping the yarn out of the way of the arm of the embroidery machine. And honestly, you know, it, it seems like a slow process, 
but all in all, this entire design stitches out. The actual stitching time is six minutes. So it is a pretty fast stitch out. The slowest part is laying down the yarn where you want it to be, get it and get positioned, and the stopping and starting of the machine. But hey, this is an awesome price to pay for such a cute design. I can't wait to see how you all are going to use this, what you're going to do with it. So I'm going to cut here because of the where the O picks up and I don't want to put the piece here and then wrap it around and go back around there because that's going to be a lot. So I cut it off and it will cover the end here of the L but it will also cover the top part of the O there when we get to the top circle part. All right, we are done stitching. Let's go over and clean it up. All right, so now we're just going to trim the end here. And you can see how some of it frays a little bit. So I just get my little vacuum. And I... And I just vacuumed the end pieces. So here the H got covered. So that wasn't such a big deal. And the end of the O got covered too. So this is really kind of the only raw end. Now, one of the things I like to do with the stiletto is just take it and run it against where I can see where the stitching was to kind of fluff it up. Don't want to pull it, pull the threads, pull the yarn, create snags, but so this was the three inch letters that I used and the yarn that I used was a used to the 25 millimeter crochet hook. And so it's considered jumbo. So I kind of think it's a little bit too thick to see the letters. So I might have uh, stepped down one more level to maybe a 15 millimeter on these three inch letters, but it is, it is all preference. So it just depends on you and what you like the best. So I would love to know in the comments down below what you think of this fun new font. We have it in both script and print, which the print is uppercase and lowercase, along with the script is also uppercase and lowercase. And it is coming in a variety of sizes from two inches all the way up to seven inches. I hope you enjoyed this video today, guys. Please leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of this new font. I'm going to have lots more designs with the yarn. They're so much fun to make. They're really quick to make. They're, they have a new fresh new look to them and I think they're just going to be very popular with a lot of different styles. Let me know uh, if you like the font, if you want to try it, what worked for you, and please, when you've stitched it out, please join my Facebook group, Creative Appliques Embroidery Fans, and share your projects. We give away gift cards to the website every month, $20, and Come share your projects using Creative Applique Designs and you could win some, some free money to the website. 
So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to, enjoy, to join me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it so I know you like my content and I will continue making more. Oh, and make sure you click that subscribe button and the bell right next to it to be notified when I upload new content. Thanks for taking the time to spend with me today. And until next time, make your life creative. Bye for now.